Praise the Lord. So again, we'd like to introduce our special guest speaker. This is my grandson-in-law. <laughs> Think about that one. <laughs> Amen. It's a new one for the book, right? But he's a young man of God. We love him and we thank God for him. And we know that he's got the boldness. We know he's going to bless you. He's young in the Lord. This is his first sermon. All right. And I think that it's going to be a joy. And uh, hopefully that it steps on our toes a little bit. Amen. If we can't say amen, we'll say ouch every now and then. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we know we've been in church. Amen. All right. So amen. God bless you. We love you. You go ahead and give him some Jesus. Amen. amen. Hey, church. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll just jump right into it. I, um, I'd like to talk to you guys today about a kingdom divided. Um, many a times when I'm on my job or I'm watching the news or it's just passed by other Christians, I see a lot of things that really, honestly, just shouldn't be. And that's not by my opinion. It's just by the word of God. I just kind of want to go over some of that. So we see here in Mark... Where are we? Okay, so I'll open up with a scripture. So Jesus was talking to the disciples, and uh, they were just kind of going on a thing, pulling out demons and stuff, when some Pharisees came along and accused Jesus, and they said he only puts out demons by Satan, by the power of Satan. And Jesus said, if Satan put out Satan, how could his kingdom stand? Now the point of me telling you this is, he went on to say, a kingdom divided cannot stand. Now today, unfortunately, I believe we have a divided church. I'm not even going to get into how we have the black church, we have the white church, we have the Spanish church, we have a this doctrine, a that doctrine, but, you know, Jesus didn't set up multiple doctrines, he set up a church, right? Amen. So, I'm going to start out, and there's scripture that says we are all equal, right? You cannot say, the ear can't say to the head that they don't need you, and the foot can't say to the eye that they don't need you, we're all equal. Many a times Christians, even in the church, will fight and bicker against each other. And I've noticed it when we've been called to lift one another up, you know, in love, even especially when they're caught in sin. We aren't to condemn or put them down, but lift them up in joy. All right. Uh, are you one of those Christians that uh, would maybe put someone down in the church? Just asking the question. Y'all don't have to be so quiet. I'm only asking the question. I'm not asking you the answer. Just, you know, think about it. You know, no, no, we can't have raise our hands. That'd be bad. I don't want to see that. Okay. Um, something I've noticed really bad in the church is, honestly, well, I suppose if the Lord's putting it on my heart, i got to preach it, right? I've noticed a lot of compromise in the church, all right? Even when I'm on my job, listen, when I'm on my job, I minister to everyone. I deliver pizza. I knock on their door. I say, hey, I just want you to know Jesus loves you. Here's a little cool thing you can read. You know, your total is $1,000. All right, when it's really like 50. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, I've had so many people tell me, you know, Ryan, you got to be careful, bro. Like, you can't talk about Jesus at your job. You could lose your job. You could get sued. People don't like that name of Jesus. And I've had Christians tell me that. And I've had Christians tell me. How even though at their work they will not talk about Jesus because maybe their boss says so or they're at the doctors and they see a sign that says no religion. And I, I just, I can't agree with that because if I don't tell them, that person might go to hell. Amen. If you're afraid of getting sued or if you're afraid of losing your job, you might just be in this thing for you. Amen. And you are called to be a Christian for you. And in fact, you are called, you are saved by grace and then you are called to do a work for Jesus. And that is to lead others to the kingdom. You are called to spread the gospel. You might not, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an evangelist to spread the word of God. Amen. It's your commission. Amen. And I just see compromise, comp compromise <laughs> after compromise, and it's just not okay. I remember I turned on the news, I want to say maybe about a month ago. And the first thing I saw on the news, it was a sign. This dude, sunglasses, held up a sign just like this, nice and proud like he shouldn't be, and said, God hates gays. Mm -mm. So, Eh? You're all quiet. You, don't, don't, you know God doesn't hate gays, right? Come on. God does not hate gays. Listen, he doesn't hate the sin. I mean, oh, he hates the sin. He doesn't hate the sinner. All right? And that's just so twisted, man, that a Christian could go and tell someone that God hates them. Like that, that, That's just not all right. 
we have called, been called to spread love. Like, take for instance the woman at the well, right? Jesus and the disciples walked up to the woman at the well. Jesus was thirsty, and he said, came up to this woman and said, can you get me a drink? And she said, why are you asking me to get a drink? And, he, and Jesus said, if only you knew who was asking you. Like, you would go and get the drink, right? And she said, you know, well, who are you? And Jesus told her, you had four husbands, and the one you're with now isn't a husband, which indicates she was an adultery. But Jesus didn't condemn her. No, he showed himself to her in the power of his love, and that, that set her free, in a sense, because she then, and when you read on, she went and actually brought the whole village, her whole village, to Jesus, and they all were saved. Right. Amen. 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 Kind of lost my spot on this. See, I got some good stuff. That's okay. okay. So I want to read something to you. Just don't don't chuck your stones yet because this is good. I want to read the scripture on not judging. It's Matthew seven one to five. If you're taking notes, which if you are, this is a good one. It says, "Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged." And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank, the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. Jesus. <sighs> Dear God. Hypocrite, it says. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Amen. Now, I know no one in this church has any specks in their eye, but think about that. How many Christians do we see today that does that? All right? Oh, look at so-and-so. She's sleeping with someone else. Oh, look, I haven't heard. They're doing drugs. Well, they're behind the scenes probably doing the same thing or something worse, right? Mm -mm -mm. Jesus warned me. He said hypocrites. And that, that doesn't sound like a Christian to me. You just might be deceiving yourself if you're judging like that. That's all right. Um, gosh, where are we? So, I also want to talk to you about the cost of discipleship. Many a times, um, we like to blame the devil about everything. And although he's behind every evil thing, it's not always him that like, forces us. How many, are, how many of you know that once you're saved, you're under the blood of Jesus, that the devil can't make you do something? Right? Come on. Oh, God. How many? <laughs> okay, good. I almost had a heart attack. All right. How many know that Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must pick up your cross, deny yourself and follow me, not pick up your cross, deny the devil and follow him. Amen. How many of you know that self can get in the way of your walk with Jesus? Amen. How many of you know that if you don't crucify your flesh, that's going to crucify you? That's right. Amen. That's right. Well, at least someone does. That's good. Okay. How many know that your flesh can get in the way of your relationship with God. Jesus. Come on. It talks about there's a war between the spirit and the flesh, and whichever one you feed more right. is going to win. Which one are you feeding? That's right. That's right. Amen. Jesus. I suppose I should ask it this way. If you're feeding the spirit, what are you doing for God? Right? Because, because if you're saved, right, right, and you're on fire for God, then your actions will show it. Jesus. You see, you can tell me what you believe. I've heard many people tell me they believe in God. They do this, this, that. But what are they doing? Their actions... Don't show that. What you believe in, your actions will show. Amen. So, so what are you, what are we doing? Are we feeding the homeless? And some of us are. Amen. Right? Are we are we giving to keep the church afloat? Amen. And we are awesome. Are 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 we going out and praying for the sick, laying hands so they can get healed? Right? Because if you believe Jesus is getting healed, chances are you're probably going to pray for people and see him healed. All right. But, you know, we say we believe, and then I also see a lot of compromise. And I'm not going to, don't raise your hands, but how many of you would say, maybe I'm not doing what I should be for Jesus. Maybe God has put something in my heart, and I haven't really been acting on it. Maybe, maybe I know that God's telling me this, and I know God's providing me for this, but I'm not doing it. All right? And that's something we all also have to ask ourselves every day. Are we doing what God has called us to do? When you see a Christian with a sign that says God hates gays and a crowd of Christians holding up signs that God hates gays, are you going to go and tell them the right way, the right thing? Right? That God loves a sinner, right? He hates a sin. Amen? Died for us all. Amen? Or are you just going to kind of do one of those and just turn the cheek and not even look at them because they might yell at you? When you're on your job and you see someone that's not a believer and attacking God, are you going to let them attack God? Are you going to let them walk in their unbelief? 
Or are you just gonna, because maybe you're afraid that maybe, you know, they'll sue you. What about your boss? What if your boss hates God and is bashing God in front of you? Would you be bold enough to stand up to your boss? I didn't even I didn't even get to check the batteries because I just went like that and I heard a sound so like it works and I know you hear me would you be bold enough to speak up to your boss if they hated on Jesus Amen. can I ask you something what if someone came up to you and said denounce Jesus or, or I'm just gonna I'm gonna make your life home maybe I'll kill you what if someone came up with a gun to your head and said denounce Jesus or I'll shoot you Will you be able to do that? And then my question is, a lot of us say, yeah, we'll be able to because, because the Bible talks about you know, how people die for the faith. And obviously, if someone's pointing a gun to my head, it's clear that this is like a God and devil thing. I got I to gotta serve God on this one. But I, can I ask you something? If you can't go to someone and say, tell them that Jesus loves them, how, how can you die for them? Amen. If you can't do simple things to live with Jesus, how could you stand before a judge? And not denounce Jesus. How can you stand before someone who has a gun to your head and just not denounce them? Friends, I gotta tell you something. We are in the last days. How many of you know that? How many? All right. On on a serious note, how many believe we're in the last days? All right. You don't you don't have to because I'm about to explain. You're really good. All right. So how many of you have? Has anyone heard? Okay, first of all, have you read in the Bible how in the last days we're going to be persecuted really hard? As if we weren't all through history, it's going to get really bad, right? How many of you have personally been kind of following the news and heard the stuff that's been going on in Georgia? Yeah, awesome, sweet. So you know how the governor is going to pass this bill. It's going to protect Christians' rights, but then they have major companies like Disney and the NBA come against them, right? And said, if you do that, we're not going to, you know, do business with you. And the governor compromised and he kind of push the bill to the side, right? That's bad. And if you think that's bad, it's only going to get worse, friends. If you're not sold out, you will sell out. Amen. Okay? If it's anything you get from this, if you don't sell out, I mean, if you're not sold out, you will sell out. Because yeah. times are going to get a lot worse. Problems and persecution is going to come to your doorstep. What happens when they pass a law that says, you know, you're, you're, it's illegal to be a Christian because that's where it's going. Yeah. What happens when they take away your Bibles? Right, because that's where it's going. If some atheist foundation is trying to get the Bibles out of hotels, how long do you think it's going to be before they try and get it off the market and out of your house? Right? Will you be able to stand? Are you in your word to know? Do you read your Bible to know enough that when your Bible is taken, you'll you'll be all right? Amen. I sure hope so, because the times are coming. Amen. And you're quiet. <laughs> Listen, I know it's my first sermon. I don't think I'm doing that bad. <laughs> <laughs> 